Hello everybody. My name is Saravana Kumar and I am the founder and CTO of BizTalk360. We have given this presentation numerous times in various user groups and, and webinars and some, some of the big events. Before we start the presentation, we typically ask a short quiz. This is just to make people aware like what are the current problems and why we have spent so much time building BizTalk360 and what it's trying to address. Question number one. Your environment managed by non-BizTalk people. The typical answer should be yes, because you don't want a very super excited BizTalk developer managing your production environment for the rest of his life. Because support and development is, is various things. Uh, people who are interested in development normally are not that interested in supporting it. So the moral won't be that great. So you want it to make sure your BizTalk environment is supported by a non-BizTalk people, somebody with like a junior .NET developer who, 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 who is happy to do the support to the beginning uh, stages of their career. The next question is your support people don't log into your physical servers. So the expected answer is yes, because we don't want people to log in and log off into production servers during the business hours. So so how uh, whatever level of uh, security mechanisms and access control you got in the server, it's not a wise thing people logging on and off into your business servers. But with the current tooling, uh, it's not possible. It's a very common practice. People uh, RDP into real production environments. The third question, like you know exactly like who stopped or unenlisted uh, things in the environment, say like somebody stopped a host instance or somebody started a send port which was supposed to be in a stopped state or somebody uh, st st terminated, a, in, terminated a suspended instance, uh, things like that. So you, uh, for governance and auditing purpose, it's, it, it is a good practice in a big enterprise environment at, to get all those things audited. The fourth question is, you got proper proactive monitoring in place and react to alerts, uh, like uh, typically something like a SCOM or HP OpenView. In, in whenever we ask these questions, uh, we get 50-50 answer. Uh, sometimes uh, people got some level of monitoring. In, in some cases, uh, they don't have any. So the last question, uh, your support people can't see content of confidential messages. Again, uh, this is, we would expect an answer to be yes, but unfortunately the real answer is no without the current tooling what we got around BizTalk server. Uh, there are various uh, industries where the messages are very confidential. A typical one is uh, somebody working on healthcare or somebody working on a financial services like uh, where the customer data protection is our top priority. With the current tooling, uh, it's pretty much uh, not possible. So you need to uh, you, you need to trust your support people and, and, and hope uh, they don't do anything nasty. So one more thing uh, we would like to cover before going into the why we designed BizTalk 360. Uh, if you look at the life cycle of a BizTalk application, it will start off with a uh, with the developer. We're just going to ignore all the, the pre-development phase like analysis and uh, and and uh, Q&A session with the business and all, all those kind of things. Let's start off with development. So during development phase, you will have a mixture of activities on a developer machine. Uh, you, you do things like uh, uh, de de deploying artifacts, uh, starting and stopping host instances, and you pretty much do everything during the development phase. Once the development phase is completed, uh, then then an IT pro uh, st uh, stage starts where you wanted to put stuff into an environment, like a controlled environment, like your uh, system integration testing or a user acceptance testing uh, or, or something like that. So in, in that case, a new role comes into picture, an IT pro. Uh, his job will be to do things like importing, exporting MSI files, importing, exporting, binding files, adding host and host instances in the environment, adding adopters, uh, like if you're using a, a, like an enterprise adopters like Oracle or something like that, that needs to be installed. And message boxes, maybe you may go with the, the default one or you may add additional message boxes and you may tune your tracking things. So there is a, there is a different role. An IT pro got his own uh, role in the organization. Once that's done, the next stage, uh, 
you might depending on the size of your uh, implementation there may be a lot of uh, uh, performance tuning uh, activities going on like you may adjust the throttling settings you may adjust the host uh, registry settings value or you may adjust the the way you track information in your environment and there are a whole lot of things you do uh, when it comes to performance tuning performance tuning in bistock is a big topic so so it, it is it requires a level of expertise and there's a set of people who does that and finally once everything is okay the the things gets into production then then the life cycle of the application starts and here here is where the real support cycle starts a project which was developed for six months you are ex you would expect that application to live in your production environment for at least five years so the lifespan of your production application is much bigger than any of the other areas so it's important we got the right tooling uh, manage and support your uh, production environments and better serve your customers so the so, so the clearly there are various roles involved in a bistock life cycle uh, but if you look at the tooling what we got uh, for this it all comes down to one big tool called Bistock Admin Console. It is an incredibly powerful tool, there's no doubt about it, but the problem with that is it is one tool which does everything basically. So so that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, you can't basically give a, your Bistock production environment to a non-Bistock person because the, the tooling is not right. Uh, it's, it's a bit scary for somebody without a Bistock experience uh, managing a Bistock environment. So we just put an uh, analogy here, like we, the, what you see on the left hand side is a very powerful Ferrari and of course you need certain level of skills to drive that uh, Ferrari. But what's on the right is uh, it's uh, something like a, like a stripped down version of a scooter. Like uh, you, as long as you got some basic skills, you should be able to uh, ride that uh, without any problems. Even if you fall down, uh, it shouldn't hurt you badly. So you should be able to uh, resume uh, without any big issues. So that's the, the, the that's a big idea for Bistock 360. Like we just focus on very specific areas in the Bistock environment, uh, especially around support and monitoring. So the life of Bistock 360 starts mainly once things gets into production where you want to manage your production environment or any controlled environment like your UAT testing environment or a system integration testing environment in, a, in an efficient way. So what's the problem? Like so far with the discussion like uh, with, the, with the, the tooling around Bistock server, there are some clear gaps when it comes to support. Uh, we just highlighted some of them here. So the top one is no governance auditing. So there is no way you can figure out like whether uh, whether someone has stopped a host instance or someone started a receive location or things like that. So that's very critical in, a, in an enterprise class uh, 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 application like Bistock. And there's no control or mis message visibility. So pretty much if somebody got access to the environment and the message gets suspended, uh, you can open up the suspended instance and all the associated messages with that and you can get into the message content. Bistock does come with the operator group uh, where you can restrict to some extent but but it's not really practical. That's what we have seen so far. Uh, uh, people start off with the operators group and, and soon they will get a Bistock administrator rights because it's not feasible to run or support your environment just with the oper operator rights. The, that's what the third point means. The built-in groups are not realistic. And the fourth point is there are not uh, visual tools available. Uh, uh, available. Say for example, like if you want to visualize the graphical message flow of your system or if you want to understand how your throttling is behaving in your environment. So there's no visual tools. Uh, the last but not the least is the monitoring requirement. Uh, typically, uh, the Bistock as such doesn't come with any any mod. Mon sorry, any monitoring tools. It relies on uh, the external tools like a uh, SCOM or HP OpenView or, or something like that to monitor uh, monitor your Bistock environment. So this basically imposes a additional overhead. Like there's a, there's a level of uh, learning curve and the level of uh, setup, configuration, maintenance and all those. There are certain misconceptions with Bistock 360, how people understand it. Uh, we would like to use this opportunity to clarify those ones. The number one, uh, Bistock 360 is not just a web-based administration console. Uh, it got various other capabilities like uh, fine grained authorization, uh, complete governance, auditing, uh, integration with message box viewer, uh, 
having a knowledge based repository uh, alert monitoring and various other things so it's not just a not just a web based administration console the the second point we want to clarify is uh, we don't see BizTalk 360 as a replacement for the BizTalk Administration Console. BizTalk Administration Console is, is way too powerful and it does a lot of things. Uh, what we don't cover in BizTalk 360, uh, some of the common things include uh, importing, exporting MSIs, uh, importing, exporting binding files. So those things which typically target your deployment activities or your development focused activities are not covered in BizTalk 360. So you still need to have access to BizTalk Administration Console. The way we look at it is your day-to-day -day support people will have access to your BizTech environment via BizTech 360 and the things you don't do it on a regular basis like your development or your deployment which you may do once in three months or six months based on your deployment cycle so for those kind of activities you still need BizTech administration console the last point is BizTech 360 is not a replacement for SCOM SCOM got a much wider scope it, it's, it's a, it's a full-fledged monitoring solution but the way we look at BizTech 360 monitoring capabilities, it's, 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 it's a simple to use, simple to configure and easy to understand. And it's focused purely around uh, BizTalk solutions and we don't cover uh, anything outside the boundary. Basically, this is this is our one-liner for BizTalk 360. We try to fill the gap what Microsoft left in the BizTalk application support area. Like we fully understand Microsoft as a company can't resolve each and every problem for, for the customers. They in the uh, in the past they provided us a framework apis and extension points and an isv like ourselves come and fill the gap and and give a much better value for our customers and that's what we are doing uh, on purely on the on the bistock server side of things I, I hope this video gave a clear introduction of what bistock 360 is if you got any questions please feel free to contact us